Hello, I'm David Chaston with 9 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week, get everything you need to know in 90 seconds to 9 o'clock. With news, the US economy seems to be firing on all cylinders ahead of their holiday season. However, consumer spending rose only a very modest 0.1% in October from September, as households took advantage of rising incomes to boost their savings to 5.6%, their highest level in nearly three years, and the highest level ever in dollar terms. This suggests only moderate American economic growth in the fourth quarter. Impressively, disposable personal income is up 3.9% from the same month a year ago, while personal consumption expenditure is up 2.7%. Equally impressive, sales of newly built single-family homes surged in the US in October and could allay concerns of a significant downturn in housing. And continuing the very positive theme, business spending surged and durable goods orders soared in October. This is suggesting the worst of the drag from the the strong US dollar and deep spending cuts by energy firms is over. It is very hard not to be impressed with this data. And the trend is reflected in their labour markets. The number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits fell more than expected last week, drifting back to near 42-year lows as their labour market conditions continue to tighten. All this is ahead of the huge Thanksgiving holiday and shopping weekend that is about to kick off in the US. Financial markets will be closed over the period and trading will be thin and diverted to Frankfurt and London. In China, and during their big early October sell-off, its biggest brokerage, Citic Securities, overstated its derivatives business by $250 billion from April to September. That's according to the country's Securities Association. While the error has since been corrected, bosses of the firm are under investigation. And believe it or not, $250 billion is about the size of New Zealand's GDP. And the flood of money out of China is changing. It is shifting from being from individuals to investors, specifically Chinese insurance companies. They expect to spend $73 billion in overseas property over the next five years, mainly commercial property, of course. And yesterday I suggested the shooting down of a Russian fighter by NATO member Turkey would raise risk aversion sentiment. And a surprise to me, it didn't. The financial world ignored the tensions, brushing them off as an item of only minor interest. Still in New York, the US Treasury 10-year yield benchmark slips again slightly to 2.23%. New Zealand swap rates have held, but risk premiums as measured by CDS spreads are marginally higher, up 5% from the start of the month. US benchmark oil price is slightly lower now, just under $43 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is just under $46 a barrel. Even oil markets ignored the NATO-Russia tension. And the gold price is softer, now at $1,072 an ounce. New Zealand starts today at 65.7 US cents, at 90.7 Aussie cents and 61.9 Euro cents, all at slightly higher levels than yesterday. The TWI is now at 71.4. I'm David Chaston. That was 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.